guys, welcome back to my channel. My hair is wet, and you know what that means. I've been kind of teasing the idea of doing more hair videos on my channel, and you guys seemed enticed by it. I have done them like way back in the past on my channel for some reason in the back of my head. I'm like, well, I've already done that. And then I'm like, no one watches those videos, Katie. <laughs> because nobody should watch those videos. And we are in what I like to think of as a new era of my channel. And so let's talk today about kind of my daily hair routine and how I get the five hairs I always say on my head, like this, this is my little ponytail, like when there's a little, like when I twist it, like that's just not a lot of hair. And I'm not even complaining because I can make this look like a lot of hair. And so I wanna share all of the ways that I do that with you guys today, just kind of from a basic standpoint, because yes, there are curled styles that I do, there are very straightened styles that I do, there are up styles that I do, but this is the basics of how I do my hair on an everyday basis to make it look like me. You know what I mean? So that I don't look like I have really flat hair all the time. So I can kind of nerd out on hair here in terms of like geometry and fitting it to your face and things like that. The first thing I would say is figure out where your part is. <laughs> my part, like, I'm gonna show you guys. If I, this is like me when I was a kid, right? I would part my hair in the center and it's like not really like the most flattering look on me. But the geometry of your face is going to be different than the geometry of my face and for some people a center part is really flattering. But today we're just going to be doing kind of my normal sort of like pretty far over side part but when I do it I will also kind of make sure that the part curves a little bit so that I think the least flattering thing is when your part starts to kind of go that way, like away diagonally from you because it does make your head kind of look like it's, I don't know, an unflattering shape. It makes it look like your head gets bigger towards the back. And so you wanna make sure it looks like it's kind of like going away from the eye. And then if you look straight ahead at yourself in the mirror, you kind of want the volume to start, you know, right here, you kind of want it to be able to show from the front in your silhouette. And if you have your hair parted like all the way back to your crown, you know, you lose the opportunity to really get any volume in the, like in your front facing silhouette. And so you want to take it from where you can still see it and comb it straight back, like kill the part. And that's where you want, you know, kind of your volume to start. And that's where you can kind of play because what you're doing, right, is not just taming the hair around your face and telling you what you want it to do, but you're also creating a new silhouette because that's kind of the way that people perceive your hair, right? Or the way that you perceive your hair is not necessarily as this strand or that strand or how it's necessarily like laying. It's just kind of like one solid object. <laughs> and so you have control over kind of what that solid object looks like at a glance. So it's more of kind of a compositional set of decisions than it is necessarily treating each individual hair as if it needs to be straight or curled or whatever. It's more like compositional. So we'll get into that. I get a little intense when we talk about this kind of stuff and you can see my hair is already drying. I have a little spray bottle here. This is actually what I do in the morning usually is really make sure that these front pieces are nice and wet because you cannot style for volume or directionality, I guess. You know, you can't style your roots essentially from dry. If you are letting your hair dry naturally and then you're flat ironing it in the morning and you're hoping for volume, you've already missed the most important step. The most important step is getting your roots to do what you want them to do in the stage of wet to dry. So if your roots are not doing what you want them to do, you need to wet them and you need to style them with heat in order to get them to do what you want them to do because a flat iron is never going to get all the way up to your scalp. And if it does, wow, that's bad. <laughs> Don't do that. We aren't even gonna be using a flat iron today. Flat irons are for styling your mid shaft to ends. They are for creating directionality in the rest of your hair, but the only way to get directionality in your roots, in the actual shape and composition of the way that your hair kind of leaves your face and leaves your scalp is with heat on wet hair. The other thing that has a lot to do with getting volume at the roots, unfortunately for some of us, is natural curl pattern and hair color. <laughs> and when I say hair color, I mean coloring your hair. I color my hair, I color all of my hair. I have highlights and then I also have a root color that I put on. I use Redken, if you guys want me to go over my color formula at some point, if you're interested, I can do that. I don't know how nerdy you want me to get here, but my hair doesn't get as volumized if 
I am overdue on my roots. So if I've got, you know, this much rootage, my hair is going to be a lot more resistant to styling because it doesn't have kind of that tooth that you get from the little bit of damage that color gives your hair. It gives it a little bit of porosity and it's much more easily persuaded to be volumized and do what you want it to do. That does not mean, however, that you can't get volume at your roots if you don't color your hair. You're just gonna have to work a little bit harder for it. So I would suggest possibly using something like a dry shampoo or a really good kind of volumizing root mousse like uh, Guts from uh, from Redken or something like that. But if you've got really fine hair, you need to be really, really careful that it's not just chock full of like really nourishing oils or conditioners or anything like that because then it will just do the opposite. There are different hair types and different products for different hair types for a reason and a lot of people do need smoothing along with their volumizing. If you have hair like mine that is really, really fine and fairly thin and resistant to wanting to be voluminous, you want to steer clear of anything that's got those kinds of nourishing oils, putting that right at your roots because we're just, it's anything, any whisper of, of weight on, on your hair is going to just kind of foil all of your plans of trying to work for the volume. So my part isn't going to mean a whole lot right away. We're going to go ahead and get this kind of what I would call like, you know, 40% damp. And what that's going to do is make sure that we have enough control, but that we're not blow drying from soaking wet. One of the worst things you can do is blow dry from soaking wet. If you're getting out of the shower and you're doing your hair before your makeup or something like that, and you are going from soaking wet hair to dry with a blow dryer, you are giving your hair way too much stress. Just let it chill for a minute. The thing is, your hair really is most easily persuaded as you're kind of like sublimating that last little bit of water out of it. So that's the moment where you can kind of like steal the identity of what that curl pattern is going to do for the day. So if you can just kind of get that moment locked in with heat and tell your hair what you want it to do, it's most likely to stay that way. Blow drying it on high heat from soaking wet is not going to make any difference in how your hair is ultimately styled. It's just going to damage your hair unnecessarily and it's gonna wear you out. It's gonna make you sweat. It's gonna make you frustrated. And sweat makes your hair curl around your face if you've got any curl pattern. Super, super frustrating. So that is why people typically tie their hair up in a towel or something like that while they're doing their makeup. I just let mine sit and then if I need to re-wet it, I just hit it with a spray bottle. And this is just like an empty bottle that was leave-in conditioner and I just use it because it's got a really great sprayer on it, so. All right, so I will often, when I get out of the shower, use something on my ends. And that is because my hair stretches, my hair breaks. It definitely is not like the most resilient hair in the world. I can't be that person who kind of goes brown in the winter and then blonde in the summer. You know, if you change your mind on my hair, it'll just break off. So I do put a little bit of kind of a protein treatment in there. This is the L'Oreal LV Total Repair 5. This is like six bucks on Amazon. It's pretty awesome. I also use in other days, other situations when I have it handy, I will use the Redken Anti-Snap. I think it is a fantastic product. I've also been known to use like maybe some kind of like lightweight oils or serums in my hair, but this is just happens to be what I'm gonna use today. So you notice I'm only putting it kind of on my ends. And when I say my ends, it looks like it's my mid shaft, but I also have layers. So these are technically still my ends. So don't put it anywhere up here. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that we need to talk about is how to actually do the persuading, right? So how to make your curl pattern do what it is that you want your curl pattern to do. Because so many of us, myself included, look at what my hair wants to do, okay? If I just kind of like let it shake out, it, I'm looking at my monitor, so pardon me, but I kind of, it's the easiest way to see my reflection here. So my hair right here, it wants to like be a shaved side. Let's be real, like this part of my hair for whatever reason wants to go And you know why? It's because your hair has no idea what up or down is. The follicles on your scalp don't give a crap that you're trying to part it or that you're trying to style it. They're all growing in whatever direction they want. Most of the time they're all growing in a continuous direction. So my hair is growing this way all the way to this way. So I can actually work with that sometimes. Like I will pin my hair over like this and it just likes to stay there because this is growing in this direction and this is growing in this direction. And so you will see that especially on men because they wear their hair so short, you can actually see those patterns. So you can see how it'll grow one way here and it'll grow one way here. And a lot of times it'll be sort of like, just like a little kid, you know what I mean? Their hair kind of seems to grow in a swirl. Your hair probably grows in some kind of series of swirls or singular swirl. Just start by accepting the fact that your hair has no obligation to make sense to you. If you have hair like mine, I should say, 
Try to avoid thoughts of going and getting your hair chemically straightened. Your hair will fall out. Like, chemical straighteners are the same chemical as a depilatory. And so a depilatory, as you know, is going to remove hair. It's just they take it off sooner. And so you may have seen that horror story of that girl on YouTube who put a relaxer on her hair, a store-bought store relaxer, a store-bought relaxer, and all her hair fell off. And that is exactly what would happen, because if your hair is really fine, you use a depilatory on it, there's just not that much there. It doesn't have anything to break down, you don't have a lot of, like, cortex in there, and so it will, it'll just make your hair, like, if it doesn't make it fall out, it will make it completely useless. So, just don't, don't do that. Don't eviscerate your hair. I'm gonna do a whole video, too, on kind of taking care of your hair, especially if your hair is damaged or bringing it back from damage or maybe some of the damage that can't be brought back and how to avoid that. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably do that next week. So how do you break a curl pattern like this? As you see, my hair is starting to kind of curl around my face right here. So what my hair wants to do is go straight back and then down. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take that section with my blow dryer and I'm going to curl it like this because if I curl it like this, which you see a lot of people do and they wonder why their hair is still backing away from their face, you're embracing, you're encouraging your cowlick when you do that. So if you do that, your hair is going to just go, oh, I guess you really like this cowlick and it's just going to keep running with it. So if you really want to break that curl pattern, you need to start by going directly against it. And then as it's beginning to kind of dry and set in that spot, sort of break the curl pattern this way, break the curl pattern that way, and it's going to give you the upper hand. It's going to give you the control of the situation. So I will show you. It's gonna get loud, so I'm gonna put it on mute. I do have this on high heat. I will not do high heat on my whole head, but I will use high heat when my hair is this level of already dry. And that is because, like I said, we're trying to just sublimate that last little bit of moisture out of our hair on its way to being what we need it to be. One of the best ways to get volume at the root and break a curl pattern is by over directing the hair while it's drying. So as you can see, my hair will not be parted this deep over, but this is a particularly stubborn piece of hair. So in order for me to keep it from kind of doing this really nasty wiggle right here at my face, which it's going to do to a certain degree, and I'm okay with a little bit of my natural texture, but it just drives me nuts if it's just kind of like so incongruous with the rest of my hair. So what I'll do is just very much overdirect it, pull it completely against it, and then I will end up not just with that curl pattern broken right at the scalp, but I will also end up with some more volume. So you see what I do is I break the curl pattern and then I start to just kind of work it in different directions and not in any kind of rough way. You want to be as gentle as possible. When you're working with like a ceramic coated round brush, it's going to kind of conduct the heat. It's going to kind of smooth as it goes, which is why it's really important to keep this thing hair free. You pay for this brush so that it's got the ceramic on it. The worst thing you can do is let it get piled up with your hair because then you're not even getting the contact of the ceramic to your hair. But regardless, this thing is already designed to be very gentle. So be gentle with your hair. It has short times for a reason. And so kind of like if you're going to start pulling it over to another direction, like if it's parted here and you want to pull this piece up, don't grab your whole head and do like this because you're going to break everything on the way there. You want to just kind of take it in little sections like that and just sort of drag them over one at a time, and then you'll eventually get your hair there and it'll allow you to kind of like address each little piece with its own little portion of heat. So let's go ahead and do that.
So now that we've kind of broken that curl pattern and the hair is just sitting at like, like 90% dry, now I'm going to start kind of sectioning and pushing the roots up with the round brush. So this actually, a lot of people don't realize this, but this guy pops out of here and it's got a little spike in here. You can use that to part your hair. And so if I take this section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just kind of push it like this. And that's going to direct all those hairs to kind of like collude to make things volumized so that that's the way your hair dries. So you're not just working against it with product in the end. So now that I've kind of addressed my difficult areas, right, right here in front of my face and sort of the sides here where everything just wants to curl because it's a little bit weaker of hair and so the curl pattern takes hold a little bit harder. So now the top of my head is still a little bit damp and this is where I'm going to start just kind of doing a very typical blowout, just very good kind of like root direction where I'm just kind of pulling this up hitting the roots, kind of pushing this forward and getting that over direction so that we can get a little bit more volume as it dries. And in lieu of dumping your head over, because when you dump your head all the way over and hit it with the blow dryer, if you've done that, you know, it tangles the crap out of your hair. For some people, they've got the hair to waste. They don't care. If they lose a third of it, it doesn't matter. But for me, if my hair tangles and it breaks off a little snatch of hair, then I'm screwed. Like that's, that's a good portion of my hair. I have to be very, very kind to it. I have to baby it. And so in lieu of dumping my whole head over and tangling it up and then breaking it off as I'm trying to comb it back out, I will just kind of take that same technique where I just sort of like comb smaller sections over one at a time. I will do that and just kind of pull everything forward or as forward as I can because what we're doing there is we're over directing that root as it dries and then gravity is going to pull those ends back down but it's going to leave us with volume at the roots. So that is what I'm doing. So the next and final thing that you will do as your hair is pretty much dry and to also check to make sure that it's dry, turn your blow dryer to cool or hit the cool shot right here and you're going to set it while it's still all volumized. What that cool shot does is it allows the roots to be kind of like artificially set. So if you were to just turn your blow dryer off, your hair would fall as it was cooling on its own and you would lose a good deal of that volume that you just worked so hard for. So if you kind of like artificially cool it off, it's kind of like stopping something from cooking. <laughs> you know, when you blanch something, you throw it in ice water, cooking reference, anybody? That's going to make it stop cooking. You know what I mean? And so you get to kind of control exactly how it stays. Now that we have all this volume, we're going to do as little as possible to it to make it keep this level of volume. So once you have got your hair dry, do not expect to be able to get a ton more volume out of it just with product. If you're doing that, you're probably going to end up putting too much product in your hair. We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it too. But if you're going for a look, then you want to get as much out of it while you are drying it. And then we get to kind of use products to preserve that so it doesn't fall because this will fall. So the first product that I'm going to use, I do like to use a dry shampoo on 
other days, right? But when it's perfectly clean, I don't really need to and I don't really want to necessarily weigh it down. But when I do use a dry shampoo, I use the Amika Perk Up dry shampoo. This is just really good stuff. I figured I would mention it. This is not a have to have. This is a nice to have. You can use whatever you like. We are going to move into the must haves if you want to have volumized hair that's like big and stupid like mine, like, like just, you know, Texas big. This is going to be your best friend. I have been talking about this product since the very beginning of my channel. They also make a lightweight version of it, but I can't find it anywhere. It's in this like cool little puff thing. So it's easier for hair like mine that I don't need a ton, ton of product. It's a better delivery system, but I can't find it. Like it's not my beauty supply anymore. I don't know what happened. So this is the Big Sexy Hair Powder Play and it is this very interesting, I call it space cheese. It is the weirdest texture ever. It's like this funny like powder and then it turns into like this grippy kind of like wax. Never gets oily, it never gets like wet. It'll actually kind of like roll off your hand, but it's very matte and it goes, it's like a powder wax. And so there are a lot of wrong ways to apply this product, okay? <laughs> like you can put too much of this product in your hair pretty easily. The best way that I have found is to kind of part it where you want it and then you're gonna kind of what I call like blouse the hair, you know what I mean? So you wanna take the hair and instead of like having it be really, really like flat, so essentially then the product would only be hitting like the top layer of the hair, you kind of wanna like blouse it just a little bit so that you make sure that it's kind of getting everywhere in sort of an organic way. And then I'm gonna do this in the mirror so that I don't screw it up. You just sprinkle it do. And I don't touch it and then I just throw it over. And that way, you end up preserving all that air that you have created, all that kind of aeration between the hairs, and you end up with this really fabulous volume that stays. <laughs> because you've essentially taken all those hairs with the air in between them, and where they were touching, you've put that little tiny bit of powder wax to make them kind of bond together at that spot. And so you've essentially created a little network of product that's going to keep your hair volumized. It's pretty cool. So you can see the difference here to like here where I haven't put the product yet where it's like, you know. So I will do the same here. Again, kind of blouse the hair. And put a little bit of that in there and throw it back. Let it kind of settle where it wants to go. And then I can kind of take my hand and encourage it a little bit. You can also use it to get a little bit of hold. So if I want my bangs to kind of stay up and over, I can just use a touch of it. There we go, a little touch. And it's gonna make that volume at my roots that I worked so hard for on my bangs stay that way. <laughs> and then we will just do a touch more kind of towards this area, but it's already got a little bit of it on it. So be gentle, because you don't want to handle it too much because it'll get kind of like, I don't know, it'll get kind of clumpy. So I'm, again, blousing that hair, making sure that it's really, there's a lot of like aeration there. And then we do that, we throw it back, let it kind of shake out on its own, and then very gently handle it to where you want it to be. And that is how I look like I have about 10 pounds more hair than I do. So you'll start to feel kind of some soft pieces and you can, you have the option to use a little bit more of this there, kind of towards the ends and things like that. Or like I noticed that here is a little bit flat. So I will kind of do that similar technique and just use it to create the silhouette that I want to create. So that's kind of the power that you have with this stuff is it's not, just going to, like I said, address like one hair at a time and say, I want this hair to be straight, not curly. What you're gonna do is first control the directionality of the hair and then you get to kind of build a shape out of it that's like flattering for your face. I think this is a much more flattering shape for my face because my jawline is very square. I have a very, very square face. And so in order to keep my jawline from being the biggest thing that you see, I need to build a little bit of volume up here so that my head looks more heart-shaped or oval-shaped. You know what I mean? So just from a compositional standpoint, this is what I'm kind of trying to achieve. So once it's like this, this is the other non-optional product, right? This is the Kenra Volume Spray Super Hold Finishing Spray number 25. I always use a Stronghold hairspray. 
that does not mean that my hair looks or feels crunchy. And that is because we don't use very much. Don't think that just because something is a medium hold hairspray that it's going to do everything that a firm hold hairspray is going to do, but just more movably. A medium hold hairspray is called a working spray in the professional world. A working spray is something where you can get the hair to start to kind of obey you, but the understanding is that it is for like an updo or something like that, where you're just kind of trying to persuade hair to do what you want it to do, and then you're going to finish it with a finishing spray. So this is a finishing spray. This is what is going to freeze a style the way that you want it. A medium hold spray is never going to do that. It has emollients in it that are going to keep it flexible. And it's always, at least for hair like mine, it's very fine, very thin, it's always going to weigh you down. It is a lot of weight. So this is the least weight. It does have alcohol in it, so be careful. This is our one alcohol-based product that we're using today. First thing I do is, make sure that the cap is working properly. The worst thing you can do is go ahead and fire away and this thing is blocked up and gummed up with product from the last few days and you end up with like a direct shot to your face. You know what I mean? Or like a really wet spot in your hair. So make sure you got everything kind of where you want it. And I'm gonna back away a little bit so I'm not like spraying my computer. And so then, what do we do? We go really far away. I'm not coming up like this. I'm really far away because all I want to do is just make the hair remember. Remember what I taught you, just be happy where you are and don't try and do anything crazy. And then after you've done that, once it's about to dry, you can direct it with your hands. Look at that, see, and it stays. This stuff's also really great because if you hate what happens, let it dry completely, it takes 30 seconds, comb it back out, and you get another shot, you get a redo. There, this is not going to make your hair so frozen, like Aquanet or something that you can't get a comb back through it. It's beautiful. That is why professional products are more expensive is because they perform. This is a professional product, it is more expensive, you have to go to like Ulta to get it or something, but that's why, is because it is not Aquanet. It is not going to freeze your hair and make it a big gummy mess. It has high quality ingredients in it and is a high performing, like fashion week kind of hairspray, and so, that's what you get when you pay for it. So that is kind of one side. And then we'll do a little bit over here. Stay really far away. Let it kind of like sit there for a second and then you can move it. You don't want to stick your hands in it right away. Because then what happens, you end up handling kind of wet hair. <laughs> and when you handle wet hair, it's going to clump together. You still want it to look like there's no hairspray in it, right? You want it to just look like it's like, ta-da, I actually have a mountain of hair. In order to do that, you have to preserve the mystery, right? You have to preserve the illusion of there being kind of air between your hair. And in order to do that, you have to wait till this is virtually dry before you kind of start sort of like suggesting it into place. So my hair still really likes to do this. No matter what, it's going to back away from my face. Plus, I feel like I look like a seam bean with my hair like this. So this is kind of like, you know, my basic way of doing it, but I will kind of usually take this piece and tuck it behind my ear. And I feel like that gives me a little bit more of like an adult silhouette. I don't know why, it kind of shows more of my jawline. It shows like more earrings or something like that. And then also these bangs, yes, sometimes I go with the big side swept bang and like it does feel kind of like teenagery to me, but once I've kind of got all that volume, I can still sort of work with it. Like I said, you can still handle this. It doesn't stick all together. You can still handle this hairspray after you've already put it in your hair. So now you can see that I have managed to kind of create that original silhouette and then sort of suggest it into the places that I want it to go where I've created kind of a silhouette around my face that I think is a lot more flattering than my hair kind of naturally dried or dried and then not had any product in it. So I think that it's all kind of an improvement. This is a little bit flat. I'm gonna show you here what you can do. You can still run a brush through that hairspray and I can kind of give it another go, you know? Kind of put it backwards like that. Hit it with the hairspray, let it sit there for a second. And you see what I'm doing? I've only sprayed this part, so I'm not actually handling wet hair, but I'm creating a shape, and then I'm hitting it with a little bit of hairspray, and then I'm letting it set, and then you end up preserving that volume right there at the root that you, again, worked so hard for. And so then, like I said, I'll kind of tuck that. Gives me a really, really beautiful shape. And then, this is kind of like whatever I want it to be. These are growing out bangs, and so they are a little bit kind of like an awkward length. And so I can kind of 
brush them up like this, and I can spray them there. I can tuck them behind my ear. That's fine too. But for now, for the sake of just this being a nice finished style, I will kind of just hit them with a little spray and then guide them into place and call it a day. So guys, let's put this in a little before and after here. Okay, this is how in maybe 15 minutes in the morning, I am able to achieve a silhouette that makes it look like I have a heck of a lot more hair than I have. It's It doesn't take very long, so it's okay if I have to style it kind of every day or every other day. So that's the trade-off, right? So it's not super awesome having really thin hair because you just don't have as many options. I feel like I can't grow my hair down to my waist. You know what I mean? I'll never have just that like amazing body covering like hippie long mermaid hair, right? At the same time, my hair is so easily persuaded to do things and I can get so many cool styles out of it with very little effort and just kind of the right techniques. And so I hope that this helps those of you out there who have really fine thin hair and you get really frustrated with it and you're like urged to just cut it all off, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with that, I've done it. But maybe it'll give you a little bit more inspiration and more appreciation for kind of the advantages that this kind of hair does have. So guys, if you enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up. I really enjoyed doing this. It's so much fun to kind of sit here and jive on hair. I never talk about hair and I realize like, I have so much knowledge in my brain about hair. So if you have any specific questions, ask those. I'm really good with product recommendations too. And also if you guys have anything that you think that I should test out that you want me to try, we'll do that too. And you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would absolutely love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching today. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.